Hello Hambini fans and welcome to another episode of Hambini Reams. In today's episode, I'm always a bit late to the party. In fact, I haven't done it for a while. Shimano accused a knobhead from Marseille gives his opinion. By Hambini, age five. Right, let me start off with a disclaimer. I have lifted pictures from various places. Um, if you want the credit, to be associated with a non-shill channel, then email below and I'll give you the credit. Uh, before I go any further, remember to check out me on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Hambini and the website hambini.com for all of your hairdressing needs. We must check the pen is working because we have lots of pen-ing to do today. Pen is working. This is the Shimano Q's website. Now, normally on the show, we get the most expensive gear. So we usually you talk about Dura Ace or Ultegra or something of that ilk. 105 is now so expensive, you might as well add it to the list. Now, Q's isn't designed for that kind of uh, gear. You've got basically a budget-friendly group set or a group of group sets because all of these things are interchangeable. And they're designed for you know, flat handlebar bikes. So you can see these two people on their bikes. They're basically like shopping bikes. And that is what this is aimed for. This is their series lineup. So we've got the 8000 series, 6000 series, 6000 series 10 speed, and the 4000 series, which is 9 speed. So they've got 9, 10, and 11. To rapidly talk about the technical details, I mean, these are the things I've plucked out. Various other people, various other sites have got stuff around the costs and all that kind of stuff. But the, these, this is the bit that kind of tickles me. So the pull ratio, which we'll come to, is the same across all of their gear. So 9, 10, 11 speed, they have become interchangeable. Um, you've got thicker gear teeth, something to do with link, guy, link glide. And this one really was a big difference in the some of the hubs they've ditched cup and cone bearings and are now going towards 6000 series bearings i hate to use the word cartridge bearings now if you type cartridge bearings into google you'll find the only suckers that use that terminology are people associated with bikes uh, and the final bit and i read this and i could not find this on the website is di2 the rare mech integrates with Shimano Step System, which is their um, uh, e-bike platform. Pull ratio is the amount of cable you have to pull to move the derailleur one index stop. So here we've got, I just nicked this from a patent, so it's probably wrong, but you can see the cassette teeth here. So there's one there and one there. That gap, is the same whether you've got 9, 10 or 11 speed on this Q's group set. Um, that means the only difference is because Shimano is indexed on the, uh, on the lever. Uh, as soon as you change the lever, you'll increase or decrease the number of gears you have. It's not relevant to the rare mech because the rare mech, you'll just move the same amount, whatever. This I found quite interesting. So they market this um, link glide technology as uh, being more durable. Durable generally means heavier. Um, now I thought one little you know, very, fairly interesting point on here is this is a, a picture that they've got on their website and you can see the difference in thickness between the link glide and the hyperglide. I think the misleading thing here is the chain can only sit basically there and based on the geometry it can only sit there as well can't really go any further because otherwise you'll you'll end up you know going through into the, the valley so the chain on this one can only really sit in there yeah around there uh, this bit which I guess is the thick bit, has very little effect on there. I think it will be much cheaper for them to make this because they can use a thicker gauge of metal and you don't need to be quite so heavy with the machining to take material off. You can just leave it fairly flat. 
Now the root cause of this, I firmly believe is because of e-bikes, because you know, for, for 20 years, Hyperglide or whatever it is, has been around and no one's really gone shredded teeth. Now with the advent of e-bikes, even some granny going up a hill when she flicks the button, she can start to shred teeth on her uh, on her e-bike because, you know, for example, if she's slightly illegal, she might have a, instead of a 250 watt motor, she might have a bit more, or she might have clocked it or chipped it or whatever, and it's really dependent on the torque. And the torque is what will break things, really. <laughs> really. Um, the other thing I noticed on here is the difference between the you know the smallest gear here and the big gear, which is which is basically like an MTB set. This is the Shimano Q's U4000 um, crank set. It's obviously because it's interchangeable, you can use it as 9, 10, or 11 speed 2x transmission. A couple of interesting features on here. The first, I think, is the riveted chain rings so once you bollocks up the chain rings you can have to get new ones um now this will really depend on the price of these things i don't know how much they're going to cost but you know there is a bit of an element of um obsolescence in there there's a some other feature that i don't know what these sort of little raised cup things are if anyone knows then do let me know i wonder if it's to keep the chain on I'm not sure if you do know, let me know. The other thing about this particular chain set is um, the bottom bracket, which is appears to be square taper, which is very unusual in this day and age. They usually go for outboard bearings with Holotech. That brings me on to the U4000 hub. And this is probably the thing that really tickled me the most. This is a, a sketch of a fairly standard Shimano hub and they've been making these in this way for as long as I can remember. If I draw your attention to two particular objects, this one is the non-drive side cup and cone bearing and this one is the drive side cup and cone bearing. It's a bit of an unusual setup because most bikes do not have the uh, free hub as part of the structural assembly. Um, typically the flanged hub has a big bearing sort of in here and another bearing in here and the free hub usually has poxy small bearings and then um, you, can you could almost take the free hub off. For example, let's take a zip wheel. You could take the free hub off, leave the rest of the wheel assembly in there Okay, it would move from side to side, but the wheel wouldn't collapse because it's supported on its own shaft. You can't do that with a Shimano wheel. As soon as you take the free hub off, the wheel will just collapse because there's nothing to support it. It's, it's part of the structure. Um, now, on the U4000, what appears to have happened is they have gone to 6000 series radial bearings. So there's probably going to be a bearing in there, a big bearing in there. And looking at that, you know the, the way that section goes it looks like it's probably going to be a nine or a zero size bearing so just for info bearing sizes typically start off at seven and then get bigger so seven eight nine zero so a nine or a zero is fairly beefy for a bike and then you're probably going to have two smaller bearings in there and there that is a huge departure for shimano i think it's the first time they're you know, actively going for um 6000 series bearings in there there is you know in my opinion that is the way forward because the disadvantage with the cup and cone bearing is once those bearing surfaces are pitted because the balls are always harder than the, the raceways you're going to have to end up getting a new hub remetalling that kind of hub is is not cost effective so yeah if you just get some um cartridge i hate using that word bearings you get a new set of balls and raceways every time you change them and because this bike group set is aimed at sort of the budget conscious end of the market that's probably a, a step in the right direction now overall there's a few takeaways that i took from here the 
I think the marketing was along the lines of it being durable. Durable generally means heavy and it's actually less wastage because you can make the materials tend to be a bit thicker, like the cassette and stuff like that. Um, so you don't have all of that you know, weight removal, which is an added machining process. And I think that's a step in the right direction. Now, if you were asking me from a purely engineering commercial perspective, I think this is done so that they've got the complete market sewn up. So you've got the shopping bike, let's say, the cheapy shopping bike, all the way through to the e-bike. You're not gonna to have to overrate or change the components because they'll all be rated for the e-bike torque. And that is the killer of all of these things. Also, if you're a bike manufacturer, you can just specify Shimano and then the, at the end, end consumer uh, channel where they go and buy the bike, they can go and chop and choose. Um, so they can maybe be able to add an e-bike motor or go to 11 speed, a very, very, very little cost. And when you come to do the spares or something like that, if you don't have a 11 speed shifter available, you can use a nine and just stop and then not use the two lower gears, something along those lines, um, because the pull ratio is the same. I think, well, well the, it's been touted that the cheaper end of the road spectrum, which is the, I think it's the Claris, the Sora level uh, group sets are gonna be done away with and Q's is gonna you know, take into that part of the brand, uh, that part of the, the market. Whether that's a good thing or not, I'd pr probably say it is because then you don't have this fanning around with, you know, is nine speed, you're gonna have to get nine speed, this, that, and the other, 10 speed, this, that, and the other, 11 speed, this, that, and the other, everything becomes interchangeable. Uh, now, if you ask me, Shimano's done this to almost, they can see a problem coming from China and they've done this to cover themselves to an extent. Shimano stuff is always gonna be more expensive, but, I mean, you've got L2 and uh, some of the others um, who are just going to come in and this end of the, the market, so the, the teenly priced 11 speed hydraulic group set, what, I mean, what are you going to compete with? So Shimano had to do something and I think that's what they've done uh, at this level. Now, that is the end of my PowerPoint. If you did have any questions or comments, then please leave them down below. And as always, keep banging your hairdresser.